Welcome to No Remorse Woodworking, where I use reclaimed wood for most of my projects. Next in my list of projects is a set of letter trays. My customer wants two sets of trays where the papers are sideways and it has to fit inside a cupboard. Besides the photo, I've been given some measurements to work from and my plan is to use this piece as a backing piece put two outer sides on and two central dividers, giving me two sections for the papers and a small central section. The first measurement that I have is that it has, it can only be 35 centimeters tall. And I'm actually cutting it at 33 because I want to trim the top and bottom edge. I will also cut the side panels the 35, actually 33, and since they only have to be about 22 centimeters deep, I think I can get two out of each. I'll cut them at 22, and again, that leaves me a centimeter for trim. And this time I will use a stop block because I need them to be quite accurate. I also need to trim my back piece. It's a little longer than I need. I think it's about 93 centimeters. The cupboard, I'm told, is 95 inside. But when I saw a picture of it, I noticed that the doors didn't open fully. So I'm making it 90 so that it can slide in. Before I can wrap the grooves and dados for the side panels, I need to decide how I want to uh, mount the shelves. I'll wrap the mounting surfaces for the external sides first and then measure up and, and cut, the, cut the grooves. It turned out that my router bit, the one that fits perfectly in width, is too long for my router table. So I'm setting up with my handheld router and some rails. Having cut the dados and rabbits, it's now time to figure out the distance between the shelves. And I am just wondering if I use a wider strip at the bottom, uh, serving both as, as the um, edging and as uh, support for the, for the bottom shelf. So for the outer, outer sides, I need uh, a strip that's twice the width of my trim. And I can cut that from this strip. And for the two centrals, I need two pieces that are three times the width. All my regular shelf supports have to be 21 and a half centimeters. 14 of those, because I want one in the middle as well. It does mean that the shelf supports will be flush with the plywood and not with the edging. But I want to edge the shelves as well. And I can then move the stop block one centimeter because that's the thickness of my backing piece. Off camera, I've given everything a good sanding. And I'm now setting up to attach the shelf supports. I'll be putting them flush with the front. And as I've cut them a little shorter than 20, 22 centimeters, they should fit into the groove. I'll be attaching them with some glue and a couple of pin nails. And with that, it's time to start putting it together. It's going to be very interesting for me to see the final result because I don't even have a sketch of, of what I'm doing. I'm building on the fly. While I continue the assembly, you might consider subscribing to my channel. Hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell, 
It's what keeps me motivated to make these videos. Thank you very much. It's time to cut the plywood for the shelves. I'll start by cutting two strips at 305 millimeters. That's actually right on the nose, 12 inches. Uh, that's the width of my shelves. I'll then cut, cross cut them uh, to the depth, which is about 21 and a half centimeters. Bit of sanding and some edging, and we're nearly there. I almost forgot that I also need a shelf for the central section. In fact, I need two. I've got two small pieces of plywood left. This should be just enough. Now I need to edge the shelves. But before I do that, I want to put edging on the box itself. I don't want to fire nails into the front, they're just unsightly, so I'll simply glue the, the, uh, the edging on. And while the glue dries on the edging, I can uh, work on the edges for the shelves. I'm going to use strips of wood similar to this to edge the shelves, since I need something to tie the top together. If I use a similar strip on top and then my edging going on the outside, it will simply be a little bit like the edge of the shelves. I've got a lot of these strips, but since they're very rough, I can't really tell uh, which ones will match. So I'll plane one side of them all and then I will decide which ones to use. I really like this, these three strips. I'm just not sure there's enough. And my second option are these slightly more brown. I just need to uh, do something about the edges, but I've got a trick for that. I'm setting up with two strips of wood that are lower than my brown strip and these will guide and keeping it vertical it's not a, it's not precise jointing but it does uh, allow me to get a nice edge to make everything a bit more manageable i'll start by cutting the edging and i need eight pieces of 32 centimeters and rather than a stop block a pencil mark will do. Then I glued them on using a bit too much glue on the first one, of course. You know, practice makes perfect. But after having let the glue set, trim off the ends on my bandsaw. Having trimmed the ends on the bandsaw, I just need to sand them flush here on the belt sander. And that's the completed cabinet. I've talked to my customer and even though I like the cabinet uh, in the raw state, she prefers to have it oiled. And I think it'll be easier for me if I oil the cabinet first and then the shell. I always find it very fascinating to see the color change when applying oil or any other finish to a piece of wood. It's one of the first times that I'm applying oil to plywood and it's soaked up uh, a tremendous amount and it took me a little longer to finish oiling everything but anyway here's the finished cabinet I hope my customer is very pleased with it I agree it does look very nice with the oil but personally I preferred it in the raw state I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please leave a like and subscribe to get notification when I upload new videos thank you very much